if anybody's gonna show up for this. I just did this kind of on a lark. I was up watching uh, the season finale of Big Brother Canada, number 10, and uh, <clears throat> the right person won, so that that was kind of cool. That was a change. But uh, we're not here to talk about Big Brother. <clears throat> we're here to talk about... We're here to talk about Vineyard Syndrome. Whoops. <clears throat> we're here to talk about the new announcement. And uh, we're going to have some fun. First off, I just made... Well, I just uploaded a video just recently to the channel that I, I, I was extremely proud of because as opposed to me turning on my camera and doing a video, this one took a lot of work. <clears throat> no, you know, like the all take work, but this one took a lot of extra aside from the time work. to just, you know, getting the slideshow, the layouts, everything like that. So I was super proud of it. I was nervous and I uh, actually showed my better half before I put it on. <clears throat> And she, uh, it's it's one of her favorites, so that's always a good thing, right? Uh, hey there, Alan, welcome, man. If you're here, uh, like, share, subscribe, all the goody uh, stuff. Uh, if you want to hit up with the super chat, it helps the channel. There you go. But uh, aside from that, let's just go. Let's, as Philip the Frank would say, let's just get into this. Let's just jump into this. <clears throat> Vanier Syndrome. Hey there, Andy. Hey there, George. Made an announcement, and we all know what it is by now. I'm sure you all know. I'm gonna bring up your comments here so I actually see them <clears throat> on the screen. I do apologize. My voice is going a little bit. Maybe drinking some <coughs> I'm not sure if tea, but I'm going to drink something during this video. Uh, if I can find the bloody YouTube thing. Here we go. <coughs> so, Texas Chainsaw and Massacre 2 is getting a 4K release. <coughs> We've gotten 4K releases for Death Wish 2 and other MGM titles. I think it's a pretty good, like, projecting into, like, the future. I'll do my Criswell here. Uh, got a little Criswell, right? We're going to get a lot more MGM releases from, uh, from Screen Factory. From, uh, Screen Factory. From, we, we get a lot from Screen Factory. We're going to get a lot of MGM releases from, uh, from, uh, from Vinegar Syndrome. And I'm, and I'm there for that. I'm actually pretty stoked about it. <clears throat> Hello, Scalder. So what do you think? What do you guys think about this whole... I was just in the movie. We're, we're, we'll talk. It, well, that's what's happening. <clears throat> but you got to understand, like, if you're into 4K <clears throat> and you're going in for the upgrade, for some people, like, the be, like, let's be... Honestly, not everybody grabbed Scream, uh, grabbed the Scream Factor Edition or the Superior Arrow Edition that came out before that, by the way, for uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. <clears throat> so for a lot of people here, where this is a big one. Hey, Morgan, welcome. Uh, this is, uh, is going to be a big thing. Andy, thank you so much. <clears throat> if I actually hit my, my AdSense revenue this time around, uh, then it will be because of you, and I want to thank you. <clears throat> Because last month was hers. Uh, <clears throat> but one thing I want to say is that I'm kind of I'm kind of excited. I know Master Chaos is a little bit uh, iffy on this. Now, see, for me, this year would probably have been a, a better year for me to uh, to than it was last year for me to get stuff. Well, you're looking at a classic. You're looking at a classic film, Sean. Uh, because as as long as that film was done on on a uh, on film and not on digital, then you're probably looking at getting uh, as as long as it's well done, getting a really decent upgrade. And I always put this in there too. Optimizing your system so that you're getting the best picture that picture that you can, and the best sound that you can, uh, for you know reason reasonably priced. That's uh, that's key. That's key when it comes to 4K. People, I get a lot of people that tell me that you know well I don't really see the difference. I can't really tell what's different in, uh, in 4K. And most of the time, I just say, well, close your eyes and listen. And uh, you'll know. Like, your ears will tell you one of the big differences there. But it took me a while to optimize my screen. And once I did, yeah, I could see the difference. I could see the difference big time. But uh, it is like the movies like that. And movies that are done on film tend to be, you know, or they're going to show off more. The latest movie, Marvel movie that you saw, there's not going to be a huge uptick because... 
all they can really do is do the HDR and, you know, do the best sound quality that they can. But <clears throat> when it comes to the, uh, the rest of it, hey there, Gary, welcome, man. Uh, then, yeah, you're looking at some decent upgrades here for, uh, for these releases. I haven't seen the, uh, the double feature yet, but, uh, this is definitely like the, the way that, that Vinegar Syndrome is, uh, is going, they're heading. And a lot of it is going to be a lot more of the mainstreamy stuff than you're probably used to seeing. Now, that don't get me wrong. There's still a ton of actual cool releases coming out from uh, from uh, vinegar from from vinegar Stream that aren't going to be like MGM 4K releases. <clears throat> Very dark, definitely. Uh, Halloween is one of the uh, great ones where you see an amazing uptick in difference on Halloween. I. I'm somebody that, you know, I saw Halloween back in the day, and uh, I had various VHS copies of Halloween, and DVDs, and Blu-rays, one of the most uh, the things that I own in my collection, <laughs> movie-wise, and uh, honestly, yeah, they're, uh, it's uh, the 4K of, uh, of Halloween, the 4K of, like, Christine stuff, that, they're revelations, so uh, same as with uh, Pet Cemetery. I think Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 deserves it. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Fallen. I truly appreciate that, man. <clears throat> but I understand where Master is coming from. Yeah, though, I got to get that out, Alligator 4K. Uh, because you have to see, for some of us, we've been collecting, especially if we've been collecting like Screen Factory for a while. And I was collecting from the beginning, dropped off for a bit because. Um, Screen Factory for a while did this, did the thing that I find that Kino's doing right now. And that's releasing too much <clears throat> to the point where it's overwhelming. And you worry about quality. Uh, and you worry about uh, just how how good it can be if, if there's that much being pumped out at the same time. Um, especially when it was, uh, when Screen Factory was just doing an, an insane amount. Uh, they've slowed down tremendously. And uh, I think that's a good thing. I think when they should, but, you know, we want to see more than 4K releases from Screen Factory or, or Steelbooks. So, uh, hopefully, we'll get some more newer stuff from there. It, it's it's going to be different. It's a, I like this. There's a lot of MGM releases that could come out. I have, um, and I did collect, actually, because I, I still collect DVDs. Some people, like, they, they've gone Blu-ray and 4K, and they won't go back. They won't watch a DVD. They won't watch a, won't watch a, v, a VHS. And I'm like, then you're collecting a format. You're not collecting films. Uh, because there's lots of movies that are in VHS and DVD that just never made it over to the other formats. That's, that's just the way it is. <clears throat> but um, the, uh, the thing that I can see right here is, yes, they're going to be doing some stuff that maybe Screen Factory lost early on. So you look towards the early Screen Factory stuff, some stuff that you don't have the rights to anymore. <clears throat> I'm glad you got the five double feature, man. Those five movies are so good, man. It, they're excellent, excellent movies. Um, so expect to see that, but don't think that that's going to just be it. Hey there, Dungeon, because there's a lot of MGM, uh, releases. There's a lot of things that they can dive into. So depending on what they got, exactly. Like I still buy DVDs. <coughs> I buy, I buy DVDs, Blu-rays. I buy VHS. My, my daughter buys a uh, laser disc and I'm super excited about that. I was able to get a, a laser disc player to my daughter. And uh, she's a big Laser Disc fan. fan. <clears throat> but this is exciting. What do you guys think? So is anybody here... I know Jose is not like super onto this, uh, to the fact that they've been putting in some MGM releases because I know it's going to double over into some stuff that he already got. I completely get that. Um, there's only so many copies of certain things that you want. And if you're not really into a film, if you don't, if, say if you don't dig Death Wish uh, 2 or if you're not super into Skidside... Uh, and uh, X-ray. Then for you, that could be a bit of a can be a bit of a yeah, you know. And, and I understand that. But Texas A's and is a big one. I think I think it is a big one. Because let's look, guys. Let's like when we really look. <clears throat> well, that's the thing. But you made the decision. We talked about this, man. We talked about this. Um, when I when I said okay, I'm not going to this year. Well, one because I was, I was moving to Morocco. Uh, hopefully that'll happen someday soon. <laughs> it's different. I mean, like Texas Chainsaw. See, there's a lot of 
humor in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the nineteen seventy, which is a masterpiece, by the way. Uh, but not a lot of not everybody got the, there was a lot of more humor in Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, than uh, than you know it, it was spooky. Uh, but uh, Tobe Hooper, when he uh, when he made the second one, he was like, I can't do the first one over again. I can't do that. But people didn't pick up so much onto uh, onto a lot of the humor that I did in the first film. So I'm gonna kind of double down on it and do this insanely different take on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And one of the great things about uh, about Texas Chainsaw Massacre too, aside from Carolyn Williams and come on, it's Carolyn Williams, man. Uh, <clears throat> truly, two two of the, the greatest legs in the business, right? Uh, <clears throat> We get like Chop Top. Bill Mosley is such a good actor and such a, such an underrated actor. Damn right, rest, rest in peace, kind of handsome man. Um, or LG, oh, LG. Who's LG? Somebody passed away that I don't know about. Cagney and Lacey. Nice. But um, there's so there's such a Dennis Hopper is in this one. He, he does like this absolutely insane Dennis Hopper-esque role. See, here's the thing. Nicolas Cage is today's Dennis Hopper in that they're both extremely good actors. They both take roles that you would not expect them to take, right? Uh, and when they get these roles, they act the hell out of them. So you're not just looking at like a uh, Nicholas Cage doing Nicholas Cage and just going in and getting a paycheck. He never does that. Dennis Hopper doesn't do it either. Dennis Hopper just goes right in. And uh, man, there's so many insane, hey, heroic welcome, man. Insane stories of it, like Dennis Hopper on the set. Oh my God. Um, that you, you know, you gotta love it. And Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, like, really amps it up. I, I love what they did with the uh, film. Now, when I first saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, I was like, what the hell am I watching? <clears throat> Like, this isn't scary. It's the same thing once I Evil Dead 2. Uh, I was like, what the hell? Because uh, there's so many people, like, Evil Dead 2 is a masterpiece. When I saw Evil Dead 2, I did not think masterpiece. I thought, what's this? This isn't scary. This doesn't scare me. <laughs> I thought the same thing when I initially saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. <clears throat> but those are ones that kind of, like, grew on me. And as I as I aged, I guess, as, as this hair lessened and the beard grew more and whiter... Uh, then uh, silver. I'm gonna say silver. Uh, then uh, then I guess I started to get more of an appreciation for the films and what the filmmaker had done with uh, with each of those films. Texas Chainsaw Two has always been a favorite of mine. I actually like the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. I think people really rag on it a bit much. Stretch his co-host. Thank you. Gee, oh man, and he's so good too. He's such a good character actor. <clears throat> It's a good film, and a 4K edition of this one, uh, I still, we don't know the features too. There could be some really good features in it. So Jose, before you write off the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, I know you like the features and stuff too. I know you like the, uh, like the really good commentary. It's a really, re like, a really good, like, uh, documentary. It can be like a bit of a saving grace, right? So, Vinegar should be good at doing those documentaries. Um, hopefully, I'm hoping for some new Carol Carolyn Williams material on this. And you know what's really cool about it? Well, it's super cool about like Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. It's not shot in Bulgaria. <laughs> There's more of an authenticity to it. It's it's not shot over somewhere to uh, to make it pretty much to do it kind of uh, I guess on the cheap. I would say. Actually, I love Waterworld. I'm one of the the few that loves Waterworld. I just heard that Alan actually. Um, so, yeah. We lose a lot of the good ones, man. But what are your guys' thoughts? I mean, like, this is, you know, I'm so, I think we're going to get more. Uh, I, I think, uh, I think MasterCast agrees with me <clears throat> that we're going to be getting more MGM releases. You just got to hope that if you're a subscriber, that they're not ones that you already have or that there's enough there that's different and new that it's going to be a release that you want to have in your collection. <clears throat> I 
So with vinegar syndrome doing this, it's going to be, uh, it's different. And here's the thing too. The other thing for the people that subscribe to the vinegar syndrome thing. And honestly, if I had the bones, I would definitely have done it. <clears throat> Even though I was, I was iffy on at the last half of last year on some of the releases just were not my, were not my bag. It wasn't that they're bad releases. It wasn't that they were, they were just weren't, weren't things that I was into at the time. And so at the last half of the year of vinegar syndrome, I, like I would prefer the MGM releases because there was titles coming out that I just necessarily weren't, weren't were just weren't for me. Uh, they were okay, and I I watched them and I enjoyed like definitely a lot of them. But uh, there's other ones that I still haven't watched. I got Laughing Dead over there. I still haven't watched Laughing Dead. It might be a great movie, but I just um, it interested me, but it didn't interest me enough to the point where when it came, I had to go watch it. Uh, there's certain ones that did. Uh, I still haven't gotten through all the blades. Uh, so having like, for me, I guess, having kind of like the, that bit of like uh, a darkness and that, that uniqueness. I like this. And I, I like the bit of more, a bit of more of the kind of maybe slightly more mainstream. I'm okay with, with Cloak and Dagger. I'm okay with the, with uh, with Thriller, uh, I, I love the fact that TCM two is coming out. I won't be able to get it right away, but uh, well, I might depending on like what you know the, what it is like then, or and when, what month it gets released. Uh, but I literally once I was a big enough fan that Arrow Video put out a box set for T Texas Chainsaw Massacre two. It was one of the original box sets they put out actually, and they did like this bitching job on it. Uh, they had, when you open it up, there's one picture and it's got leather face on it, another picture, you got Chop Top, just really cool, got a booklet, got these different discs, you know, awesome sauce, cool beans, all that type of thing. Uh, so I got it right away and it was still pricier when I got it. It eventually went down in price and it was one of the hardest ones for them to sell out because he did so many copies of them. Um, but I kind of, kind of dig the uh, fact that they're doing a lot more of this because there's stuff that I got on DVD that I would love to get like a 4K or even Blu-ray release. It's the thing, guys. 4K is your... It's, remember slipcovers? 4K is your new slipcover. There you go. It's a, it's a cool format uh, that that I, I, I love. I really do love. Uh, and it's the new thing. Like, it's... When collectors back in the day... You, you could tell somebody that like was kind of like, like movies and people that were like obsessive about movies. Uh, I'll give you the Ebert like factor. Uh, Roger Ebert, when he was doing, doing a commentary, he did very few of them. Or when he was like watching a movie or studying a movie or writing about a film, uh, the format that was his preferred format to watch was a laser disc back at the time because you could go you could go shot by shot. You you could you know just get like frame by frame and just really study the film. Uh, he wanted it kind of in at the time the best quality that you could get. 4K is that right now. 4K is the one where basically you want, if you want to, if it's well done, if it's a good remaster, uh, if you want to get, okay, this is the, it's pretty much, this is not like, okay, this is not the shiniest, but this is the closest to theater experience. That's what 4K is. It's not meant to be shiny. It's meant to be uh, close to your theater experience. <clears throat> Closer to what the, you would see, what, what the person making the film would see and have in mind when uh, they were doing it, when they were making the film. And we got a few filmmaker, filmmakers here, so I'm sure they appreciate that. Put it dead alive, you'd buy that. Dead alive, I'm not quite sure who he's going to put that out with. <clears throat> hey there, Anthony, welcome, man. Scarecrow, Scarecrow's is an interesting title. I mean, I didn't pick that up when I, I and I was one of the per, people that pushed for Scarecrow's. I missed it. I just got the MGM DVD of that one. I'd buy that one in a second. Uh, that's, that's a decent release. Now, initially, when they're first going to do Scarecrow, <clears throat> they're going to, like, double feature it with another film. But enough people were, uh, were into uh, Scarecrow um, that they eventually did a, uh, a, sing a single release for it. But I, remember, I think it was Destroyer or something like that with, uh, you know, the guy, the big muscle guy who did the uh, Learn the Ropes TV series. Uh, uh, Lyle Alzado. Alzado. Um, American Ninja is super cool. And I got the 88 Films box set of American Ninja. So, you know, like the, the four pack they put out. So uh, I didn't get the box set. I got like, a bottle for them separately when I was in London at uh, Fops when they were having a sale there. 
Investing in a 4K player is an investment. $300 on the low end. It is an investment. But I think it's worth it. I really do. Because I say if you're going to invest in a 4K player, then do this. Invest in a region-free player. Go to your low... When it, Go to your 220 Electronics website. Go there or go to Amazon and look for 220 Electronics. Uh, I've mentioned them so many times now, they should sponsor me. <laughs> uh, but no, in all honesty, uh, if you are going to go 4K and you haven't gone 4K and you want to put in the bones to get, like say you got a 4K TV, you just have a 4K player, uh, and but you want to have like a, a decent, good 4K player and say maybe you haven't gotten region free or maybe you had a region free player that's been around for a while like my Seeky has and you kind of want to get a new one. Uh, I'd say, you know, go in, like on the low end, you, you can get like a good 4K player, I mean a really good 4K player, like a Sony with Dolby Atmos. Thank you, Anthony, man, thank you so much. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully your weekend's going fantastic, man. Um, and, uh, and, and 4K together. Not a 4K, like upscale, but like an actual 4K UHD and a region-free player for $300. And I know that seems like, a, like you know, that's a bit on, like heavy on the bone side of it, but... Uh, it's uh, it's good. It works, and it's like, and it's one that has like Sony, like Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision, and uh, for those that like are in the 4K and have been here for a while, I I had like uh, my Xbox, and I can tell you right now, Xbox is a decent 4K player, but it's not a good 4K player, uh, so I have not seen 4K completely in the way that it's uh, that it's meant to be seen. My TV is optimized for it, but my obviously my my game system wasn't, and that thing just crashed on me, so. Uh, <clears throat> There you go with that. So I, I eventually I have to bite the bite the bullet and grab like a uh, a uh, uh, I've got to go to 220 and get a, a region free 4K player. So that's uh so that's me. That's the thing that I got to get next. That's my next big uh, purchase, which is crazy because I got so much boxed up here. But there's like some 4K releases that are coming my way thanks to uh, uh, viewers like you uh, that um that's, that ordered me uh, the uh, Thriller. Cloak and Dagger and Miami Connection. You have no idea how excited that my better half was when she found out like Miami Connection was coming to our house. Uh, she's a huge fan of that style of film. Uh, but yeah, I, I recommend if you're gonna go, if you're thinking, if you've got the 4K TV, and a lot of you, a lot of people have now. Like my dad's got a 4K TV. I'm not sure he's got a 4K player yet because it is there. There is that. There's still that like bit of a, of a barrier of entrance. Like, everybody's got a 4K TV now, or you'll be getting one in the near future. It's just that getting that getting that 4K player, that's the thing. Now, a lot of you guys out there are gamers, so I'm sure you got your 4K gaming systems. Uh, but as you know, as, just like in the last generation, uh, they are gaming systems first and 4K players second. Uh, but they do great on the on a pinch. Like, so, Sony, when, when Blu-ray came in, did PS3. Uh, you, you, you know, it's a cheap way to get a Blu-ray player. You got a, well, not a cheap way, but it was a way to get a Blu-ray player and a game system all together. Um, when people were kind of like, th thought that Blu-ray had a bit of a barrier to it, just the way 4K, some people think 4K does right now. But that that's the way to go. Anyway, I want you, want, kind of want your thoughts on it. <laughs> your orphans. I thought you were an orphan. No, let me tell you, this complicates the story with my dad. Um, I, uh, you gotta love that movie. Miami Connection. Who doesn't want that in 4K? Oh my God, can you believe that? Here's one of the ones, like, you know, the Texture Chains and Massacre 2 is fantastic. You know, Death Wish 2, fantastic. Miami Connection in freaking 4K. Like, just let that sink in for a minute. That that's coming in 4K. And there's so much other stuff that com could come out. Um, so many other, like, kind of cool releases. Like, I wish that I still have... Uh, eventually, like, Sean, eventually I think that, that 4K is just going to be the standard. So probably the next time you get a TV, it's just going to be 4K just because they're cheap. And uh, that's, I think that's where TVs are going right now. Um, but it's not, it's not a problem. It's not a bad thing. And it's okay, uh, following. Like, do you have a 4K t TV? Uh, <clears throat> because at the end of the day, one of the neat things about a lot, most of these 4K releases that I'm seeing is that they're 4K Blu-ray releases. So if you're thinking, okay, I'm going to be going to get something in the future, right? I'm gonna, I'll eventually go 4K. Like the, you know, the price of the of the players, they're gonna drop. The uh, you know the the TVs are already cheap, so uh, it's just you know eventually getting a player, or maybe I'm gonna get a game system. Maybe I'll, I, j I just wanna try 4K, kind of see see how it does for me. Um, 
when you buy like a 4K release as a Blu-ray with it, you can watch the Blu-ray. Uh, nine times out of ten, most of the features, if not all the features, are on the Blu-ray anyway. So you're uh, you're going to be you're going to be ahead of the ahead of the curb when it comes to that. I got a CRT too, TV too, but only for uh, for like gaming for purposes for me right now. But uh, you sound like you're retro, Alan, which is not bad at all actually. To each his own. You don't have like just because I sing the praises of 4K does not mean that it has to be your bag, man. Um, when it comes to it, at the end of the day, you got it's got to be what you like. So that's why I understand when Master K says I don't need an upgrade of this or I don't need an upgrade of that. Uh, so with that, I got to say you hope you hope that the features are going to be uh, something that brings you in, that sucks you into a new release. Because for me, that's what it is. It's there's a reason I've got like around four copies of like uh, New York Ripper. Um, you know, features. Uh, there's reasons that I got like three or four copies of like of Black Christmas, and I, I still had to buy the, the Scream Factory edition of Black Christmas because there are, there are fe different features and different releases. And uh, I think Scream Factory has the one feature that I really need uh, that is actually was a Canadian feature because it came on in, in Canada, I think it was on our sci fi channel, which was called Space, and it had like an hour long like documentary on, um, on Black Christmas, which is really good. And it's not on, ironically, it's not ironic. He's right. It's for some reason it's not on the Canadian release, the Seasons Grievings release, which came with the mini Rumor magazine, but it's on the uh, Screen Factory release. They're able to to get that. But for me, I because you know I want the Canadian special edition. I, I got two actually, Sean. I have upstairs a Samsung, uh, fifty five inch, uh, and that is in the bedroom, and I love Brandon Tennell, a fellow Canadian man. <laughs> Um, and downstairs we have a 65 inch Sony, uh, 4k, uh, television. And that's one of the killers is like, uh, we, we've finally got a TV that shows Dolby vision for those that have been in the 4k or just getting into it. Dolby vision is, it's a superior like <laughs> format, but HDR is winning over cause you know, beta VHS, um, uh, Hope you remaster every movie ever made. Because here's the thing. At the end of the day, right, Fallen? Like, you, the choice is out there to get them. But you don't have to. Uh, but if you want to, it's there. But if it's not out there, then there's no choice. It's all about choice, right? It doesn't hurt anybody for another release to come out in a, in a new format. At the end of the day, if you got a Blu-ray, DVD, if you're cool with the release you got, cool beans. That's fantastic. But if another release comes out, at the end of the day, all that means is you have more options uh, to choose from. Uh, whether you decide, okay, I need to upgrade this, I want the because uh, I just want the sound or the picture, or you say I really want these new special features. Or say I'm cool with what I got. But at the end of the day, it, it's never a bad thing when a uh, when a new release comes out. Now I do understand if you bought like a subscription, your subscription, you, you plunked a whole bunch of money into uh, into like a company, and you're finding that uh, a a large chunk of those releases that you're getting uh, are kind of upgrades of stuff that you already got, and that that you know that uh, I, I I get that. Uh, for me, I, I'm on the other side of that where the upgrade thing, like I wouldn't, I won't go out of my way uh, like all the time to buy like uh, an upgrade unless I you know I really got the extra money because there's certain movies that I still want to get that I don't own in any format. But um, if I right now, I would be over the moon. If I had a subscription to Vinegar Syndrome, because all these upgrade things, that's right up my that's that's up my alley. That's the I I love the to get the films in, in the best format they can. And you know, it doesn't always have to be 4K either. Like you can get like good stuff. Flickr Alley does great stuff in Blu-ray. Um Flickr Alley, underrated company. Not not enough people talk about them. I gotta get some Flickr Alley down the road. Um there's just so many companies that are, that are putting out such good stuff. And I, I like that. I mean there's only so much, like, let's be honest, really cool, but still bottom of the barrel stuff that, you know, companies like Severin or, or Vinegar Syndrome can put out and stay afloat with, uh, you know, there's, you got to have that crazy movie that, like, nobody's heard about or, like, or that you, you and your friends want, wanted to, to get finally to come out. But uh, at the end of the day, to, like, to make, like, a, the money that they need to make to keep financing 
the movies. So, so to get those smaller movies, to get those those homegrown horrors boxes, to get those regional horror stuff, to get that crazy stuff that you never thought was going to be available, uh, then you got to have movies that are going to sell out to the masses. That's, that might get more casual eyes on them. And that's what something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 will do. This will bring people into Vinegar Syndrome that have not have not bought from Vinegar Syndrome before. Rad, which is a movie that I... I blew my mind that that was that that actually was a thing but it brought people in and um and at the end of the day that's what it is because when people come in and they buy more stuff then that's good for you because the money that's been spent like getting these being being on these on these bigger titles uh trickles down to and this is the only time trickle down economics is actually something that works uh <laughs> is um is that it's going to it's going to get movies that you want released. Released. <clears throat> it, it's going to get that obscure slasher, science fiction, horror film, that shot on video thing that you don't think anybody remembers, but they do, um, released because of something like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre or something along the lines of a Beastmaster was able to come out and uh, be more, uh, get more of an audience and, and, and get more money into the company. So it's, it's in, my, in my thoughts for that, for that reason alone, it's, uh, it's definitely a good thing. And I'm very interested to see what the artwork is going to be like for Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I have very high expectations for that artwork. And how are they going to do it? Will this be... Well, well, here's a question for you guys. Do you think that Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is going to be a regular UHD? Or are, they going to, are, we, are we going to VSU this? I agree, Anthony. I mean, like, it, it, like the thing is that, and taking like, like saying lower risks with stuff like this means you know when, when they sell, they take risks on on higher stuff. I hope, I really hope that Terminal Island, the 4K of that one, sold really well because Terminal Island was one of the best movies that Vinegar Shouldn't Play last year, and uh, and it had like a, a premium release, and that that blew my mind. Uh, so I was like, I just hope a lot of people are buying this because that means smaller movies like Terminal Island will get the 4K release, will get like better editions. And I want to see that, man. That's what I want to see. And that trickles down like a, a 4K release of something that's good. Okay, then they'll do Blu-ray release of something else. Not everything's going to have the elements to do 4K either. Uh, 4K, when you're looking at something like that, you're not going to do a new movie because unless you're just putting it out there because a lot of the stuff is shot in 4K, 6K, 8K, that type of thing. Um, but when, to get like the real utilized, like what 4K... At its, at its optimum best, you're looking at movies that you're looking at the original OCN, the original camera negative, or an inner positive. That's the best way that you can actually uh, work on getting a, getting a good remaster for 4K. But enough about 4K, more about this Vinegar Syndrome MGM connection that we're seeing. We're seeing more and more MGM releases coming up from Vinegar Syndrome, and I'm down with it. What do you guys think? Like, we may see more that from the early Screen Factory stuff. So it gets me like looking back at uh, at what Screen Factory released early on. What's what's no longer available from them? Do I think Vinegar Sims has a premium boutique label, even though they release a lot of blah? I think they're up there. They're definitely up there. I have received my shot scope. W weren't you watching when I when I showed that off in, my, in the video? Gotta watch the video, man. I showed it off actually. Actually, on, on I did a. On a boxing, I think they did a boxing of it. Um, but uh, you came in late. That's the thing. Um, I think Arrow, like George just mentioned, uh, Shasko. Arrow is the top of the heap right now. Like for a long time, that was Criterion. Criterion, because just because just the variety and the importance of the stuff that they Invaders from Mars would be a great release. Iron Rooster, that's awesome thoughts, man. Um, yeah, that would be so good. I'm a, you know, I'm a Toby Hoop, Toby, Toby Hooper fan. So, yes. Oh, hell yes. That is such an underrated film. Um, but yeah, no, I think Arrow would be the, would be the top of the boutique, like, labels uh, right now. Uh, just because they do stuff and go beyond, like, like any other company. And that's not, like, lessening what Vinegar Syndrome does. Or lessening what companies like Indicator or Severin or any of them do, because you know at the end of the day, the the companies that are around right now that are really kind of fighting it, 
uh, the vinegar syndromes, the severins, the criterions of the world are on a pretty even keel. Uh, it's just that uh, Arrow still is managing to put out a wide variety of releases and, and a wide uh, a wide amount of uh, genres. I do, I do have I've been a while, but I got it here. I got the DVD of uh, Mortuary. I think I got it twice. I got it on a single release and I got it on a four pack. Criterion does great releases when it comes to uh, that. I don't have any of the 4Ks though, so I can't, I can't be, uh, I can't tell you like the, what the 4K releasing is like. I do need to get like Citizen Kane just because I like the film, which is you know, so, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's such a standard, right? But uh, you know, it's it's the truth of the matter is I really did like the film. Men's Society I like it in 4K as well. I just like those two releases. See, now MGM has, I don't know if MGM has both of them. Wouldn't it be neat, though, if, like, they put out, like, the, the 80s remake in 4K and put, like, a Blu-ray out for, like, the original that, and put it on, the, like, as, as a extra disc type thing? It, it, it's such a cool little film, and people, like, kind of just pass it by. There's certain films like that that people, uh, Strange Behaviors and other than people kind of, like, pass on for, for ages. There's so many films that are out there, and there's so many little releases that MGM put out. Um, I'm not sure if anybody would be into it but uh equius was another one that i have on like one of my uh i hope i pronounced that right <laughs> that i had that had on one of my mgm releases i actually kind of dug uh and there's like little titles too um there is the no who's the annie ruse with the kino um whatever happened to Aunt ellen whatever happened to ellen or something like that was the thing that was another mgm release that i had i think it's because they've been doing this uh at, at a different level Oh no, so Criterion does. They started doing 4Ks Fallen as of last year. Uh, the, like, uh, Citizen Kane and Men's Society were the first two they announced. Spontaneous Combustion really needs a good one. Scott Grimes, man. Anybody remember Scott Grimes? Any 80s kids out there? Uh, he's in uh, the star of that film. Uh, trust me, you, once you see Scott Grimes, you know, you know Scott Grimes. He's in a bunch of stuff. Not, we're not sure what happened, what happened to Scott Grimes, but uh, damn good actor back in the 80s. Hopefully he's still around. Hopefully he's not passed away or something like that. Or scandalized. Critters, exactly. Um, but yeah, what has he done in, in like in more recent years? Maybe he's done stuff and I just haven't watched it or I haven't seen it. But Or maybe, you know, he looks different now. But I, I want to see releases like that. I want to see different stuff. I want to see, look, I want to see them look. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to see, guys. I want to see them diving into that freaking midnight movie. Label that sub label that MGM had out. Remember the Midnight Movie sub label? Remember how cool that was? And how many like different releases? And like a bunch of them did get released eventually. Beast Within got released. Uh, but there's a ton of stuff that didn't get released uh, from the, from Midnight Movies. I remember there's Witchcraft. There, there's, there's a whole bunch of them that like never got like big releases. And we should have saw this coming because Alien from LA, by the way, which came out last halfway to Black Friday. Ooh. Uh, that is another MGM sci-fi release. I got it on a four-pack. Uh, and But man, it was a good upgrade. So it, it's it's an exciting time. I mean, as we look into this, it's it's more of an exciting... I think it's an exciting time. What do you guys think? Like, hit me back. Tell me what you guys think. Bring on a 4K release of, of MGM Canon titles. Oh, yes, Jay. You're preaching to the choir here. The Curse. Oh, yes. I missed out on The Curse. I want, I want all of them. I want all, I want all The Curse films. Uh, I got ghoulies, so I, I, you had to have something bigger that were up here in that one. Hey, strange and welcome, man. Um, TCM2, man. 4K release from Vinegar Syndrome coming later on in the year. Troll 2. Uh, I, I got the Blu-ray, but uh, Real Trend of Living Dead with original music, right? Jay, because we didn't get that on Screen Factory. We got it on the second site release. We didn't get it on Screen Factory release. A couple songs missing on Screen Factory release. Um... Uh, but yeah, the curse one million percent. Uh, the Ghoulies. I've only got the first two Ghoulies, I think. Um, so yeah, man. What about three and four? I want Ghoulies to go to college. I want Ghoulies in space. Um, I want to see that, man. I, I'm not not sure if it's got to get a 4K release, but you know, a Blu-ray release with some cool new features on it, It'd be pretty awesome. Like they put out the Fear. Okay, I'm still waiting for the Fear Two to come out. Um, <laughs> I know a lot of people like crapped on that film, but you know, I kind of dug it. I think Fear Two is better, uh, but. Uh, so people like that's like the thing unlike where where they did like return you know psycho cop returns and, and psycho cop which you haven't put out 
it's an okay film. It's not as good as Sub Count Returns, but I still want it just because that OCD part of me wants to complete the collection. But when I was like uh, back in the day, we getting VHS. I was renting. I like Psycho Cop, the, the, the second one. I rented so many times. Psycho Cop, I rented once. <laughs> so uh, you know that uh, that happens out there. There are so many releases, guys. Like there's stuff that's already came out, and yes, with that it's going to double over. But the stuff that's not. 88 Films. There you go. There's another company that is doing amazing stuff. George sent me the Species box set, which, by the way, is freaking awesome. It looks gorgeous. It, it, the, every one of the cases are fantastic. There's like a poster. There's a booklet. There's, uh, there's, there's, there's lobby cards. And uh, if you never, ever thought like, you know, sh why should I go region free? Arrow Video, video Indicator, 88 Films, Second Sight, BFI, that's the reason you go region free. That's the reason that uh, that you go region free because you know what? Because there's so much good stuff out there and you don't want to limit yourself. And here's the thing. People think that when you go region free, it's going to be more expensive. It's not actually. When I went region free, I actually spent less money uh, on certain releases because I had the choice to pick a, a sometimes a better release for less price than I would have paid for it uh, for the for the other one. Because I know because that is named Harry Potter, actually. Well, my my latest video was like the, I showed my uh, showed in my last live video. You showed up in that one, but I showed it at the beginning of the video. Um, I'm gonna be doing like a review and overview of those films down the road. Actually, for those that did not see the video that I made tonight, by the way, I made one. Well, I, it took a while to make, and I'm uh, hoping that uh, that a lot of people watch it because I spent a lot of time working on it, and my I showed my better half because I was nervous. Because it was something new and a different format that I normally do. And she said, this is special. I like this. Put this on right away. So I did. And it made me happy. <laughs> she called me special. Man, and my better half is my... One of my... And, like, and, and in the nicest way, it's one of my harshest critics. She is completely bluntly honest all the time. If she doesn't like something, I know it. <laughs> Coffee or Jackie Brown? Black Spotation would be great. Coolie High. Uh, now, see, Coffee and Jackie Brown, they've got a few releases. I don't think Cooley High's gotten a really good release, has it? And that's that's a damn good film, too, Cooley High. Like, we've seen J.D.'s Revenge get a release from Arrow Video. You know, Jackie Brown and Coffee did come out from Arrow Video. I'm not sure if they came out like... Uh... Your boss did the sound transfer? Oh, nice. Well, he did a good job on, on Troll 2. I like that. But I think movies like Cooley High... Smart, yeah, Smaller ones like that don't have like as big a uh, as big a release, and it's a good film. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs is in that one, um, and it's one of the good <laughs> films Lawrence Hilton Jacobs is in. Like, there's a lot of films I would love to see get a uh, get big releases. There's canon films I want to see that are still haven't gotten like great releases. There's like MGM films that still haven't gotten great releases, and there's just some different films. She makes me better than I th have any right to be. So there you go. That's that I'll say that she makes me better than I have any right to be. I I, I say the princess and the thug, that's what I say. <clears throat> There's the thing, that's what I've been thinking about, Jenny. Early on, actually, she was in a couple of videos. Uh, I'm not sure if they're just Patreon ones or not, but she's in a couple. Um Oh, well, I think that Scream Factory is the place for, Le for Leprechaun. They put it like a really good box set for it. Same with like A Nightmare on Elm Street. We still don't have a good box set for that one. Uh, and you know, can you believe it? Because A Nightmare on Elm Street was the defining DVD horror box set of the DVD like era. And we're into, we're going to 4K. We're, you know, we've got, even gotten past Blu-ray right now. Blu-ray's still being done. But we still haven't gotten a, a defining box set for the movie series that defined the DVD. DVD era of horror box sets, which kind of blows my mind. But yeah, she's been in a couple. But she's very, very careful. Jay's right. If Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 was coming out now, that came out for one of two reasons. One, somebody found out and it was going to get leaked. <clears throat> and uh, there's only a couple places that would be mean spirit enough to do it. Uh, or two, that's, I love that, the number two documentary. Yeah, the Scream Queens, you mean? Yeah, I do. I like that, actually. Um, 
this is the tip of the iceberg and there's better stuff and even better stuff coming. Like, think about that. Like, let that sink in for a minute. Texas Chainsaw Massacre too, whether you, that's your favorite, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre or not. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a defining, like, film in the genre. There's no getting around that. Number two is, is super incredibly well done. And I, in my opinion, now it's not for, everybody doesn't love it, but I, I do, and I think it's it's it, it's kind of a definitely a tempo when it comes to the uh, to releases. And like Halloween two, it's like it's a good sequel, as opposed to a sequel that seemed more like it was being done for money, as opposed to being done to make like a good film. But that's announced now, in May. What the hell's coming next? At this point, Jay, the VSAs are all, like, <sighs> are you excited about the VSAs? Because I I want to be, Jay, but I can tell you right now, after TC3000 and, Fo and, and what's it, Fortress America? America? Uh, or <sighs> I'm not excited about VSAs anymore. There was a time when there'd be some, there'd be a spellcaster. There'd be, like, uh, Evil Town that, that was coming out. There'd be, like, some of the, some cooler... Uh, earlier, like, different action films. Uh, 